everyone. Welcome to another episode of Canadians with Disabilities and Their Allies. I'm your host, Brent, the weatherman. Settle in and get ready for a conversation with our special guest. Okay, everyone, welcome. Um, actually, good afternoon, and we actually have today on my show, we have uh, Joseph from uh, For the Future. .ca and uh, he's actually here today uh, to uh, talk about the GLBI and uh, what how it will actually benefit Canadians with disabilities and then a lot more um, across Canada. Welcome, Joseph. Thank you, Brent. Hopefully, you're having a great day today. I am. Thank you very much, and uh, welcome to uh, welcome to the show, and uh, thank you for coming on today um, as my guest speaker. Um, to talk to Canadians with disabilities regarding the benefits of the GLBI. Um, you, uh, you have a lot of insight of how it all works and uh, uh, Zand, uh really touched base when I had her on, uh, on my show previously. Uh, she talked about the GLBI and all the benefits. Uh, you have a little bit more um, of a, the breakdown of it so that in case people miss the segment of it, um, you can maybe explain to uh, the listeners uh, how it all works and uh, all the components. Go ahead, Joseph. Yes, thank you. Uh, Brent, the, the reason I'm coming on the show today is to explain to people what the GLBI is not being said out there in the mainstream media. And the reason I say that is because they're not really going through the numbers. They are setting up a framework in which they're telling the provinces mm -hmm. we're coming up with this federal benefit and it's going to be put in place and we're going to distribute it by either CRA or through the provinces or whatever and they're going through their process where they're setting up the framework for it but they're not talking about the rates and they're not talking about the urgency that's going on with poverty they're talking about what they're going to do years from now and what the the average canadian wants is results they really want results they don't want to hear i'm going back and forth i'm going back and forth we need to do a better job mm -hmm. and the way that they do that is by actually enacting the program yes I fully agree you need to set up the framework and everything, but in the meantime, they should be doing these reports. They should be figuring out how much it costs, how many people it's going to go to, and what credits and tax implications will Canadians have afterwards. And if they don't plan for that now, then we may be too late to the conversation after when they go, all of our public consultations are done. And then they start talking about rates. No, we should be talking about rates right now. If we went by the same rates that the PBO had put in the reports that this GLBI is based on, this year, up until July, we would have been getting fifteen twenty-six a month. Sorry, fifteen twenty-nine a month. For people with disabilities, they would have been getting two thousand and twenty-nine a month. Okay, mm -hmm. for families, it was twenty one sixty, and for people with a disability in a family in a home, twenty six sixty. For two people that were disabled, it would have been thirty one sixty a month. Now, it would be fifteen eighty six. It would be twenty eighty six. It would be twenty two forty four, because the GLI is geared to inflation. It's linked to it. If inflation goes up, the basic income goes up. So this year in July, we would have seen a 3.4% increase in basic income. And look at what happened today in the political landscape. Aaron O'Toole has been voted out as the leader of the CPC. And they're going to have a leadership meeting 
and they're going to vote on a new leader. And in the meantime, the new budget has not been out since the election. And all it takes is one MP to trigger an election. Do we really want to be into another election again and another plan and another set of priorities? I would hate to see that all the good work that Leah Gazin and MP Julian and all the, the, the political people that are working towards this because they can see the greatest big picture with housing and crime and healthcare and everything that this benefit would be being swept away again to restart again. Canadians have spoken in the last election with the minority government. It sends a message. It says that people are unhappy. If they're not leaning more towards one side or the other, it's because they're undecisive and unhappy. And yes, they may vote Liberal or they may vote NDP, but the majority of Canadians now vote for the party. They don't vote for the person in office. And that's sad because the people in office should be speaking about the issues that stand hard to them. And a GLBI touches upon pretty much every issue across Canada. But for good news for you, Brent, BC is the highest rates across the country when it comes to social assistance, basic income, or sorry, basic needs and shelter costs. BC is the highest rates. 59%, 65%, 68%, 71%, and 74% of 75% of the poverty line. Yeah, BC leading the uh, leading the country um, in that, and um, it's hopefully that other provinces um, will follow suit. And, uh, and and which provincial government is in power in BC? The NDP. Does that maybe say that they, they, they actually see a direction towards solving poverty by actually just giving it what it needs? And that is assistance. Mm -hmm. To cover your basic needs, your you know, monthly needs, right? There are, was it BC? It was just in the news. $375 shelter rate is not raised in 19 years and 10 months. Uh, 14, 14 years, 10 14 months. 14 years, 10 months. Yeah. It, it, it almost feels like 19 years, I mean, based on the buying power, right, for the high cost of rent. Yeah, exactly. I mean... Still 15-year-old yeah. rate. I know. It, it's, it's just doesn't make sense. Um, Do they even pay attention to see how much a shelter rate is? It's, um, it's completely out of uh, touch with the, you know, with... <laughs> With the year, the current year, um, market rents are beyond... Out of touch. The phone oh. line was disconnected a year, a, a decade ago for non-payment. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, there was um, there was an individual that had posted out there, um, I just can't recall who, but uh, he had meant, uh, there was a mention, um, and of course the, the, the government basically says all the reasons why they don't want to raise the 375. They say landlords will take advantage of it. Uh, landlords are already taking advantage of them yeah, regardless exactly. if you give them a rate or not. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I remember uh, going back years, there was a uh, there was an MLA who was complaining uh, just up and down, just kept complaining that uh, that she couldn't find a place to rent when they're in the legislative assembly when they're in session to rent to find a place at a thousand dollars um but she gets paid two thousand dollars right yeah so they got a basically they got a, a rate increase to cover their accommodation meanwhile uh you know 375 is there and then but they say well if you want to pay 375 then you go into subsidized housing well what about people in market rent paying high market rent they're not catering to the uh the majority over what 72 percent i believe it is uh, i think yeah yeah i think i was reading about that i think it was uh uh db and it depends on what subsidized housing you're in brent yeah. some housing they calculate the 375 rent and they only take 30 percent of that yeah. Some of them, they calculate just the 375 rent. But regardless, mm -hmm. these geared to income housing corporations that take on these government grants and they get $300,000 per unit and they go and they build it. And then five years later, the building is starting to fall apart. And they look at the government and they say, well, I'm only getting 300 bucks a month for rent. Mm -hmm. 
if the government is going to spend three hundred grand into an affordable housing project per unit, then why do they not have the vested interest to make sure that it is properly maintained afterwards? Instead, now, a decade later, 15 years later, these same very projects are coming up saying, I need multi-million dollar refits. Mm -hmm. We spent $300,000 on a unit, but now the unit needs an extra $50,000 in renovations. And we got to kick out that person and then bring somebody else new in, but the rent is going to be higher because now the renovations have cost more. That is a factor of life, and the quicker that our politicians adapt and say, these increases are happening without our consent, and if we don't keep up with them, one day our predecessors are going to answer for the reason of it, and that is happening now. There was just a report in the National Post that broke this morning that says inflation should not be tied to housing costs, even though inflation rate accounts for your rent and mortgage costs in the consumer price index which is what identifies inflation even though it's included it's really not that properly reflected and so when you hear these politicians blaming inflation for the housing market no this is the housing market because you have people buying 1.3 million dollar homes and their lifelong income is 800 grand. So basic income helps by, for the very first year, giving a huge slap to affordable, disposable income for Canadians. For the first year, it's going to increase spending. It's gonna do people buying the things that they need. Coffee makers, paying off their rent, paying off their utilities, paying off their debts, their credit cards. They're going to, you know, maybe invest a little, maybe put a little away for the retirement because they're still working, because they're still got their incomes. Mm -hmm. But for the people that are on social assistance and people with disabilities, some of them can see over a 50% income increase in income at once. And that's not for extra money now for them. That's them getting their life adjusted to a proper living. So a minimum income does sustain the, the economy. It helps the disabled immensely, especially when it comes to taxes, because that's a big picture that we need to consider after the fiasco we had with CERB. CERB was a disaster for a lot of people with disabilities because they were told by either their workers or by you know somebody on the TV, go ahead and apply if you need it. They did, they got it clawed back, they paid taxes on it, and it cut off some of their benefits for a year. And now we're gonna be going into year number two, where they have not had any extra support, they have not had extra monthly benefits for COVID. They're still expected to wear their masks, use their hand sanitizer, clean all of their materials, order out whatever that they may need to do. And on top of that, all the extra inaccessibility issues that are going on, because of it and they're not thinking about affordability now and affordability 10 years from now they're thinking about budget affordability because they're thinking about re-election and that is wrong for the people i've been seeing a lot of post people saying well glbi i mean that would be great because you know i could i could go and live in another province uh you know uh, for a while or or whatever and and then I don't have to reapply. I, I don't have to apply for you know to basically prove that I'm disabled or you know you're you're going to get that guaranteed amount. Here's an example um, for poverty: when somebody yeah. cheaps out and spends ten dollars less on a coffee maker because they don't right. have the money, and guess what? The coffee pot leaks. Right, right. Or somebody you know somebody wants to go and maybe treat themselves to uh, a meal, um, you know, once or twice a month and, oh, you know, it's a, it's a luxury. Oh, oh, how can you, how can you afford to do that? I mean, uh, well, I mean, gee, I mean, the, the luxuries in life, I mean, go, go and buy yourself a new uh, a raincoat because you need it. Well, I mean, how, how do you do it? You got to save up months and months and months in order to do it and hope that, you know, you can get it. I mean, with the GLBI, I mean, you're going to have enough money to go and buy the basic things you need. And you, oh, you need a new vacuum cleaner. Oh, okay. Well, good. You know.